Welcome to Read Ancient Languages. I'm Dr. Fausto Bruto. Today we will talk about the ancient Egyptian obelisks, those beautiful tall monuments found in Egypt at uh, religious sites such as temples, often uh, covered in uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs and uh, often dedicated to pharaohs. In the first part of this presentation uh, you will see a um, general uh, description of the features of ancient Egyptian obelisks. Later, we will move on to a specific obelisk. This one, which is called the Obelisk of Montecitorio, because it's found in Piazza Montecitorio in the heart of Rome. And the reason I chose to focus on this particular one is because, as you can see, the ancient hieroglyphs on its surface are very easy to read and include the five names of the titulary of a famous pharaoh from the 6th century BC. So there are uh, today in the world, there are, remain uh, a little over 30 ancient Egyptian obelisks. The reason I say in the world and not in Egypt is because actually the majority, more than half of these obelisks are no longer in Egypt. They have been moved away from Egypt. Most of them have been moved uh, by the ancient Romans after uh, the conquest of Egypt in the 30th BC. But some have been moved away from Egypt in modern times, either by donation or by acquisition or as a result of uh, excavations and archaeological campaigns. The obelisks vary a lot in size from a couple of meters to the tallest of all, 27 meters at the Lateran in Rome. Actually, the tallest of all is one that is not erected. It is the only obelisk we know of that is left in the quarry before being uh, uh, carved out of the rock and it's uh, still, uh, still at its uh, uh, excavation site in Egypt. It's quite interesting to look at the map of the world and see all, where all these uh, obelisks have ended up. There are uh, ancient Egyptian obelisks in uh, New York, London, Paris, in Poland, at several sites in Italy, and um, about a dozen uh, obelisks uh, are still uh, visible in Egypt. However, most of them are no longer in the place where they were supposed to be. Uh, they have been moved uh, to museums or other destinations. But the place in the world with the highest concentration of uh, ancient Egyptian obelisks is Rome. There are 13 ancient Egyptian obelisks in Rome. And uh, if you've been a tourist in Rome, you have no doubt seen them because they are places at the most iconic uh, spots such as St. Peter's Square in the Vatican, on the Lateran, in Piazza del Popolo, in front of the Pantheon. And this particular one, like I said, is in Piazza Montecitorio, just off uh, of Via del Corso. And the building you see in the background uh, is uh, the Italian Parliament House. As you can see, the obelisk is covered in very beautifully carved hieroglyphs. They are very well preserved. They seem as if they were carved yesterday. At uh, the base of the obelisk, you'll see an inscription in Latin. The inscription um, explains that the obelisk was uh, taken by uh, Octavian Augustus, the first emperor of Rome, just after the conquest of Egypt. It was brought to Rome where it was dedicated to the sun god and it was used as a sundial. It was used as a sundial for several centuries, then in the 8th century it toppled and um, it lay on the ground for uh, almost a thousand years until uh, a late Renaissance Pope decided to recover it and uh, re-erected it and added uh, um, um, modern sundial at the top. Today we will uh, focus on this uh, on the hieroglyphs on this obelisk and in particular to this section because it has the uh, advantage of showing all five of the names of one particular pharaoh to which this obelisk was dedicated. As I mentioned in other videos um, on my channel, pharaohs in Egypt had up to five names in their titulary. And um, it's, it's quite unusual to see all five of them depicted so clearly and so easy to read. So we'll read them together. We will start with uh, the top 
left, that is uh, that uh, set of hieroglyphs represents the so-called Horus name of the pharaoh. The pharaoh in question is Sametic II, a pharaoh of the 6th century BC. This is called the Horus name because, as you can see, there is a, a Horus falcon. The falcon represents the god Horus and is perched on a stylized image of a palace, the palace of the pharaoh. And within the palace, you can see the columns, and within the palace, we recognize a set of three hieroglyphs. The top one represents a Senate board. Um, Senate was an ancient Egyptian game, uh, not very different from uh, chess. And the Senate board uh, hieroglyph uh, is read Mn. Then we see a circular hieroglyph, uh, which is thought to represent either a sieve or maybe a placenta. In either case, it is read as H. And uh, the next hieroglyph, which represents a heart and signifies the spirit, is read Ib. So taken all together, the set of hieroglyphs in the Horus name of the pharaoh Sametic II reads Menuch Ib, and it means splendid of mind. The next name we look at is the so-called Horus Gold name, or Golden Horus name. You can see that the same falcon which represents the god Horus, is this time is perched on a symbol which represents gold. Beneath it, we recognize the hieroglyph for the sound S, and a hieroglyph which represents, is thought to represent uh, the lungs and windpipe of an animal, and uh, is read nefer, and means beauty or perfection. It is the same hieroglyph which you can encounter in the name Nefertiti or Nefertari. Beneath them, the two horizontal lines represent the upper and lower Egypt, and they are together read as Tawi. So altogether we read the Senefer Tawi, which translates as who has made the two lands perfect. So this is, this is the golden horse name of Samedic II. Then we move to the bottom inscription. This set of hieroglyphs is known as the, the Nebiti name of the hieroglyph, sorry, of the uh, pharaoh. And uh, ne Nebiti means uh, the two ladies. And so who are those two ladies? They are the goddesses Nekbet and Wajit. Nekbet represented by a vulture, and Wajit represented by a cobra, and uh, representing uh, the lower and upper Egypt, respectively. This is a crest, an heraldic symbol to imply that the pharaoh is the ruler of Lower and Upper Egypt. Beneath the symbol, we recognize a hieroglyph which represents the head of an animal and reads the sir. And then part of this hieroglyph is spelled with the symbol for S, which is a folded cloth, and the, symbol, the hieroglyph for mouth, which is read R. So altogether was sir, and then beneath them the hieroglyph of an arm which reads ha. So altogether we read that the Nabiti name is Wasar ha, and it means strong armed. So this is the third appellative of San Medicus the second. Next we come to this set of hieroglyphs. Three hieroglyphs are included in the cartouche. This um, oval-shaped ring, which uh, is characteristic uh, of uh, throne names and uh, birth names of pharaohs. This is the throne name, so the name the pharaoh would have chosen at the moment of his coronation as pharaoh of Egypt. The three hieroglyphs, uh, the upper one represents uh, the sun and is read Ra, and uh, it, it is the name of the god Ra. Then we have again the Nefer uh, hieroglyph and the Ib hieroglyph for heart or spirit. However, these three hieroglyphs don't read in this order. They uh, read Nefer, Ib, Ra, 
And the reason why Ra is put at the top as opposed to the bottom where it should be is because out of respect for the god Ra, the symbol for his name is put at the top. This is called the honorific transposition. Below the cartouche, we recognize two symbols. The, uh, the symbol for the plant of the sage and the symbol for the bee, the insect. And this together means he who is of the sage and of the bee. This is a characteristic appellative of the pharaohs. And again, it symbolizes their ruling over both upper and the lower Egypt. And it is often mentioned, the symbol is often together mentioned as uh, uh, being the symbol for uh, dual kingship. So altogether, the throne name of this pharaoh was Nefer Ib Ra, which means perfect is the mind of Ra. Finally, we come to another set of uh, hieroglyphs also included within a cartouche. And this is uh, extremely simple to read because each of these hieroglyphs represents a consonant. And ancient Egyptians were very sparse at uh, representing their vowels. The top left hieroglyph uh, uh, looks like a square, but it represents a stool, and is read P. Then we have the folded cloth again, and it's read S. Then we have the we have the owl, and the owl is uh, read as M. Then we have this, which represents a hobble or a rope for uh, tying up cows and is read t. And finally, at the bottom, the symbol or hieroglyph for a basket, which is read k. Altogether, this read, reads psmtk, which in uh, anglicized reading is pronounced psammetic, or according to Latin and Greek historiography, sammeticus. And sammeticus, in this case, sammeticus the second, or samtik the second, was uh, the third pharaoh of uh, the 26th dynasty of uh, Egypt. And he was uh, the grandson of Sametik I, who was installed in his position as pharaoh by Ashurbanipal uh, during uh, the Assyrian uh, conquest of uh, Egypt. This uh, statue with the effigy of Sametik II can be seen at the Louvre. So the next time you are in Rome, you will uh, be able to see up to 13 different ancient Egyptian uh, obelisks. This, which is one of the largest in front of uh, the Italian Parliament House, reads uh, the five names of uh, the royal titulary of Pharaoh Samedic II, which you'll be able uh, to decipher after this video. Thank you for watching uh, Read Ancient Languages. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And uh, please check my other videos, including the video with the launch of uh, my book on Hittite history and language.